anything left gets handed over to Julio Estrada from the Alameda Metal Scrapping Company. Julio's scrapper blade crushes with 90,000 kilograms of pressure. Oh, I like my job. Just destroy it. Take the airplanes apart. It takes two days to turn a plane like this into a pile of metal. But the MD-80, as big as it is, is just a warm-up compared to the giant 747. A plane's remains may look like garbage, but they'll give this heap of scrap another shot at life. Drivers take the metal to the Allied Metal Company in Chicago, where it's melted down. The challenge is to separate the aluminum from other pieces of scrap. A high-powered magnet rotates all the metal. The less magnetic aluminum rolls off, while iron sticks to the drum until it's moved over to its own bin. From here, they take the iron to its own smelter for recycling, while the clean aluminum heads to the furnace. Inside, gas-fired ovens heat the metal to temperatures up to 1,000 degrees. In just four minutes, each 450 kilograms of scrap is an aluminum bath. Workers pour the liquid metal into 550 kilogram molds, or 10 kilogram ingots. They'll make five to 6,000 of these high-grade metal bars from Aero Turbine's Jumbo and reclaim a total of $30,000. The mechanics have now gone inside, outside, and up high to salvage valuable airplane parts. Now, for the first time, they look below. Five sets of landing gear extend from the plane's belly and wings. They must be removed, but the question is how? They must still keep the plane up and balanced. But with so many components removed, the 747's balance is already off. Roger has a solution. He decides to cut off the tail. He calculates this should stabilize the CG, or center of gravity. Julio's shears can tear through five centimeter thick steel with one bite. And the mechanical jaws can open wide enough to crunch a half meter at a time. makes an incision all the way around the tail. Then, it drops to the ground. They stabilize the rest of the plane with two types of jacks. Metal ones, which will be spared, and disposable supports made from wooden railway ties. Sledgehammers wedge the beams in as tight as possible. But some beams are rotted, and others not as solid as they'd hoped. No one knows how well they'll hold under the 747's enormous weight. You gotta make sure everything is level. You don't want these to start teetering because if it's not level, and it's, it's all, all it's gonna do is start breaking, breaking, breaking its way down. With all the supports firmly in place, the team has temporary peace of mind to remove the landing gear. The mechanics get to work removing the giant bolts. 
but it's not easy. Down slow. The weight of the plane is on those bolts, so they must lift and push from above, below, and inside until those bolts have no pressure on them at all. Only then can they be undone. It's a grueling process. But in two days, all the landing gear is out. Each set will be resold for a total of $50,000. The fuselage now rests solely on its jacks. Julio and his two colleagues now move into the plane. With the tail off, they essentially have one big door for removing different recyclables. We separate everything. We separate the wire, the insulation, and the aluminum. The 747's passenger cabin was more than double the size of any of its contemporaries when it was built in 1968. It stretches six meters across and encloses 850 cubic meters. The length of the Wright brothers' first flight in 1903 could have been performed within the economy section. Once they've removed the inside of this plane, they even strip the 452 seats and set the metal aside for recycling. What's left of the fuselage looks ready to scrap, but not so fast. A serious safety hazard hides in the tail. I need this move. Super heavy counterweights made of depleted uranium. In flight, they help stabilize the aircraft but if they are not carefully removed, they could become radioactive. You gotta leave enough room around the uranium because it's fine, it's non-radioactive right. until you cut across it and with the heat, right. it'll make it radioactive. Environmental Health and Safety Manager Anne Marie Stilson will send the depleted uranium to a licensed handler. It's the good um, eco-conscious way to get rid of it as opposed to just throwing it in a scrap metal pile. This is smelted down, and if it did get smelted down, it caused radioactive, radioactive activity, and it could get pretty uh, serious. Another serious hazard may still sit in the giant fuel tanks. They can hold 193,000 liters and must be completely empty of liquid and gas before scrapping begins. There is only one way to know for sure if they're clear. Crawl inside. It's a tight squeeze. But once inside, the size of the 747 tanks is a welcome surprise. These four sevens are far roomier than what these guys are used to um, inside our tanks. You can stand in there. One hundred eighty-eight centimeter tall mechanic Lyle walks through the tanks with ease. Now in here checking out the levels inside the tank here with our sniffer that we have, checking the uh, oxygen levels and the CO2 levels. When Julio crushes this tank later in the demolition, sparks are bound to fly. Any residual fuel or fumes could cause an explosion. But after careful inspection, I mean, there's no fuel in here, it's dry. Lyle gives it the all clear. What remains of the jumbo is now set to be crunched. Ready, you gonna do that one? This is a grand finale with a perilous edge. The mechanics must get their metal jacks out of the way one at a time. Soon, only the makeshift wooden jacks will support the aircraft, but they may not hold for more than a few seconds. I'm gonna loosen these jacks and pull it out real quick. Well, I'm basically gonna let the air out and run, because I don't know if it's gonna fall or what it's gonna do, so. Go. Less 
and less support, the aircraft will come crashing down at any moment. Yeah, it's going to be a good show no matter how it goes. Each jack released makes the plane less stable. It is the most delicate procedure and extremely dangerous. Go, 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 go. Come on. Come on, come on. Let's go. The metal of this old jumbo buckles as it settles on the makeshift towers. But it doesn't fall. The railway ties creak, groan, and splinter, but the wooden beams hold. The crew that spent the past 12 weeks pulling apart and recycling this plane can stand back and watch at a safe distance. Awesome. That's awesome. I didn't think the shearing would hold that long. That did better than we expected. But it must come down for workers to get underway with the next stage of recycling. So, Julio Estrada moves in with his powerful hydraulic claw. And finally... Now, Julio's blade rips into the 747 like a hungry carnivore. The crunching process may look haphazard, but there's a method to the destruction. He does have an art. I can watch what he does, and there's a purpose to what he's doing. But that's his specialty. Once the aircraft is, is on the pad, he's in command. Julio wants all metal and little else. He smashes out all the windows. He slices through the length of the entire fuselage. Then flips over the top like it's a hard-boiled egg. As he guts and plucks from the center of the plane, he separates metals into different piles of aluminum, steel, wire, and copper. The mechanics who labored on this 747 teardown over the past 12 weeks stand and watch the remains reduced to scrap. Kind of, kind of felt good to to mess it up. I usually fix them, you know. Good airplane. Hated to see it go. All aircraft are different. All have their personalities, just like your car. But there's been airplanes that uh, I've worked on over my years in this business that I would like to see crushed. So. <laughs> It takes Julio eight days to complete the job, four times longer than a standard-sized aircraft. The once massive jet has been reduced to a six-meter by six-meter pile of junk. The price for this scrap metal? $30,000. That makes a grand total value of 